Occasionally, when you're DMing, your players throw you a curveball that you never saw coming. Make a choice so fundamentally shocking that you blue screen for five minutes and don't know what to do. This is a story about one of those curveballs. The Torchbearer's crew, still grappling with the tragedy at the ball and the subsequent revelations, decided to take it easy with a couple of side missions. Cut to Ren and Sean sitting in the office of Governor Edwin Gremis, the governor of Glass Hour Tower, who definitely wasn't a vampire serial killer. Fun fact, when I made that video on the time loop arc, one of my players messaged me to say that he knew who the killer was. Lady Umbra! A character who had not been introduced yet when I did that arc. Yeah, no, it was Gremis. If the killer was Umbra, then it would have been a worse mystery than that one I wrote where the murder weapon was an icicle made when dry ice was thrown in a sink, a thing that is definitely possible. What was I talking about? Right! Gremis! Look, I don't like you very much, but... Why don't you like us? You took my time crystal and put it in a bag of holding and sent it to the Astral Sea. Yeah, that was funny. <sighs> Look, you're the only mercenaries I know who are strong enough for this task. A few weeks ago, I paid a doctor at Tesla Tower to send me a certain item. He hasn't sent it yet. I need you to retrieve it for me. What's in it for us? 10,000 gold given when the package is delivered. Deal. Awesome. We'll do it. And we definitely won't accidentally destroy this one. Okay, new deal. I will give you 20,000 if the tabaxi somehow dies on the mission. Deal! And so the party set sail for Tesla and climbed to the doctor's lab on the higher stories of the tower. The doctor opened the door and said, Hello there. I am Doctor... Shit, forgot to give him a name. Someone give me a name! And then one of my players shouted, Doofenshmirtz. Fuck it. Sure. He's named Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Let me just rename a few other characters. Okay. Yeah, this will work. Hello there. I am Dr. Doofenshmirtz, mad scientist. Why are you here? The party explained. Ah, oh, the thing the governor ordered. I, uh, don't have it. Where is it? Currently, it is in another dimension. You see, I am the world's leading expert on interplanar studies. Behold! My extra planar grabberinator! With this device, I will be able to track down and grab any item that exists in another plane. Unfortunately, every time I turn it on, a pesky interloper shows up and smashes my innator. It's really annoying. The party offered to guard Doof while he turned on his innator. He made his repairs, flipped a switch, and the machine glowed as it opened a portal to another plane. It'll take a few minutes for the machine to extract what I need. And my arch enemy should be showing up right about... A metal fist punched open the door. The party looked out to see a pair of bronze automatons. Your enemy, I presume? No, I've never seen these gentlemen before. I have. A voice came over a speaking stone attached to one of the robots. Hello there, this is Machina Orum, Captain of the Goldleaf. Pirate Lord of the Thalassa Sea. Great, more Pirate Lord shit. Woohoo! Ran Madarasi, Sean Stryker, Armic Coldstone. The Depths Queen has requested your heads, and I am fairly good at following instructions. Thus began one of the longest and least interesting battles I have ever DM'd. Iroh had just learned Polymorph and tested it out on Ren, turning him into a mammoth. Ren charged up to the automaton in the doorway and attacked it. In doing so, he blocked the doorway preventing the rest of the party from fighting the robots. Cue 20 turns of Ren and the robot wailing on each other as the rest of the party took pot shots from behind the corner. And when the robot died, there was a second one! DM tip, don't let fights turn into this. Still, things did become interesting halfway through the battle. Doof watched as a woman with wings landed on his balcony. An Asimir? The winged woman drew her sword. Gasp! Perry the Asimir! Help! It's my arch enemy! Perry ripped off the lens of the innator, shutting it down, and flew out the window. Fortunately, Sean had a plan. He ran and long jumped, grabbing onto Perry mid air. They wrestled in the air, and Sean managed to slide a hand away the lens. Unfortunately, he didn't manage to save against Perry breaking his grapple check. 
causing him to plummet from the balcony. It's okay! I have a plan. I activate my immovable rod. Okay, you've been falling for one round already, so make a strength save to hold on in spite of the whiplash. New plan! I tie a rope to my bag of holding, uh-huh, and then I tie the other end around the immovable rod in a way that the rope loop is loose, uh-huh, then I press the button and climb into the bag of holding. The rope around the rod will grow taut, stopping the bag of holding, and then I can just climb back out. Okay, give me a dexterity check to do all that in six seconds. So here's what happens. You think about doing all that, and then right as you tie the rope, you hit the ground, leaving a Looney Tunes crater. Ha! I have enough HP to not die! Victory, Sean! Sean zoomies back to Doof's lab, right as the rest of the party took out the robots. He popped the lens back in, and the innator turned back on. Barry flew in for another attack, but Ren and Pace shot her in the wings, causing her to crash onto the balcony. A loud crack rang out as the innator summoned something from another plane. The glowing blue crystal Ren and Sean recognized, the same one that had trapped Glass Hour Tower in a time loop. That thing is an abomination, Perry said. In the wrong hands, it has the power to destroy this entire plane. Eh, it'll probably be fine. Perry, too injured to fight back, retreated. Sean picked up the time crystal and returned it to his bag of holding. And on a ship floating in the middle of the sea, a pirate ward watched this over the cameras he'd implanted into his automatons. His metal mouth could not show expressions, but if it could, he would have smiled. The party sailed away from Tesla Tower. Once they reached the middle of the ocean, they spotted something in the sky. A pair of metal dragons flying after their ship. The dragons landed on deck and the party drew their weapons. Let's talk, Orm said over a speaking stone attached to the dragons. What do you want? I want my crystal. I gave it to Edwin Gremis a few months ago so that he could amplify its power, but instead of returning it, he attempted to use it for his own purposes. I sent one of my automatons to retrieve it, but somehow the crystal got banished to the Astral Sea. Heh heh heh. Anyway, long story short, I want my crystal back. The way I see it, you have two options. Option A, my dragons kill you and bring it to me. Or, option B, you hand it over and you get to live. Ugh, aren't you going to try and kill us for the Depths Queen? The crystal changes things. The princess wants you dead, but I could care less. Not like it's going to matter in a few hours party huddled and discussed their options. All right, counteroffer. Let's make a deal. What did you have in mind? We will sell you the crystal if you give us one of the dragons. And then I blue screened. I genuinely did not see that coming. I fully expected the party to fight Orem for the crystal. I did not in a million years expect them to just hand the magic super weapon over to the obviously evil pirate. So, Anyway, they gave Orm the crystal. One of the dragons flew away with it, while the others stayed behind with the party. A few hours later, things went to shit. The first thing they noticed was the change to Tesla Tower in the distance. It appeared to be growing taller, stretching high into the heavens. Then, they realized the tower wasn't getting taller. Their ship was lowering as the ocean beneath it disappeared, inches at a time. The world shook his Tesla Tower, as every tower popped out of existence. Large cracks spread across the sky, letting through blinding light as the entire world shuddered. Something's wrong, Iroh shouted, moments before he too disappeared. More and more things disappeared as time fell apart. Pace's scars, Sean's sword, the marks on the party's arms, the cool new dragon they just obtained. The party's boat plummeted as the sea beneath them disappeared, all at once. A moment later, the ship disappeared too. As the remaining party members fell, one by one, they all disappeared from existence. The camera lingered on the empty sky, now free of an endless ocean. Then, slowly, it panned down, showing continents covered in forest. The party awoke in an endless white void, with a giant eyeball staring back at them. What have you done? The eyeball said. Its voice an echoing cacophony. Armic rolled a religion check, realizing the giant eye was an angel. Perry? he asked. The eyeball shrunk down, 
transforming into a humanoid form. What the hell did you do? Everything is fucked! I head back here to recover for five minutes, and when I look back, the universe is gone! What did you do? We made a smart business deal! We gave one of the pirate lords the time crystal. Why? The party shrugged. I'm fired. I'm so fired. They're going to set me on fire and send me to hell because they left me in charge and everything is fucked. Uh, pardon me, Miss Angel, but can't the gods fix this? The gods are, uh, out of the office at the moment. They're busy building a new universe right now. They left me in charge of checking their mail and making sure no one accidentally erased everything from existence. Something I didn't think was a thing that would happen! Look, it's fine. We can fix things. Yes! Yes, you will fix things. Not me, you. It's fine. It's going to be okay. I send you after Orb, you take back the time crystal from him, and then everything will be fine. Where is Orb now? Now isn't really the right word. He traveled 300 years back in time to eight years before the Great Flood. Perry opened a large portal in the middle of the White Void, a swirling time vortex. Fair warning, the time portal is a bit inexact due to the whole time being broken thing. You might end up somewhere you shouldn't. But don't worry, stay put and you'll be pulled back on course eventually. Oh, and please, don't mess anything else up! You have my word! The party ran through the swirling portal and disappeared, dragged back in time. But as they moved through the swirling portal, their thoughts pulled them in different directions, sending them off course. Armic Coldstone woke up on the top of a mountain. He crawled to his feet and stared out over the world before him. Endless forests and lakes, cities and roads, the world lost beneath the flood. He wanted to stare at this world, but his eyes were drawn upwards to the dark, rainy sky. A massive bird, a phoenix the size of a continent, rose towards the heavens. The sky split open as a storm of massive arrows struck down the phoenix crashed down to the ground, its wings impaled by stone pillars. No. Not pillars. Towers. The rain continued, washing over the land until the towers were all that remained.